Thank you very much, Emma. Um, with this auditorium as my witness, if I die giving the speech, please do not let it cut me up. Okay, so my speech, Sauvignon, from savage to noble. Let's take a few moments to reflect and consider the place you're from. I don't mean where you live now, or even where you were born. I mean the place where you make sense, where you make sense, where you feel grounded, secure, aligned, where you can be the fullest expression of yourself. Just give it a couple of seconds. Close your eyes and think about that place. As Patrick mentioned in his introduction, the Maori called this place Tūranga Waiwai. It translates directly as a place to stand and includes the idea of not only roots and physical foundations, but also the place where we feel empowered or connected. My Turanga Waiwai is Waiheke, Waiheke Island uh, in Auckland. Could we go to the next slide? Hello. And, and this is a shot of it. Throughout the presentation, I've got lots of interesting shots from a Waiheke photographer from all over the world, just to try to create this sense of place in your mind as I speak. For me, Tūranga Waiwai and wine speak is a sense of place. For me, this is the expression and a final product of all inputs from vine to glass. It includes the variety and other environmental factors, but arguably, of more importance is the interpretation of these elements by the wine grower, not the wine maker, the wine grower. This definition may sound very similar to a popular and related wine tasting term, terroir. But for me, the two expressions are quite distinct. A sense of place is not terroir. Ask two wine experts at the top of their game to define terroir and you will get four different answers. Some professionals feel the wine grower is a vital element of terroir. Others believe that the wine grower has no place in the definition that is reserved only for natural, environmental factors of the site, such as geology, aspect, climate. Some believe you can taste terroir in the glass. Others feel that given winemaking is a secondary process, it introduces a multitude of variables with absolutely no link to the vineyard. Still others feel that what a lot of professionals pick up terroir in the glass are quite simply winemaking faults. And talking about a terroir in the glass is pure folly. To avoid confusion, to simplify, that's something we need to focus on in the, in the wine trade. I propose that we leave the term terroir in the vineyard and eliminate its use from our wine tasting lexicon. Of course, we must replace it with another expression. That's what we like to do in the trade. We like to complicate. And I propose that this expression is, of course, a sense of place. In my sense of place concept, the wine grower is the interpreter of the terroir and not part of the terroir. When the artist looks at the landscape, he or she sees the terroir, the potential. But the final painting expresses his or her interpretation of that site. And so it is for wine growing. Some wines have a weak sense of place, others have an abundance. The finest wines in the world express a strong sense of place. The least interesting wines in the world have very little sense of place. A sense of place may be conveyed either through traditional or culturally influenced winemaking, or more commonly, through a personal interpretation of the site. Thus, there are two categories of wine that can express a sense of place, wines of site and wines of style. Let's explore the parameters that are vital to the creation of wines of sight. 
Firstly, the fruit must come from a superior site that has optimum match between the planting material, the variety and the rootstock. The vine age must be sufficient to achieve balanced fruit at harvest. As the vine ages, it has more potential to express its sense of place. The vineyard, and importantly the crop load, very important for Marlborough, must be managed accordingly. A balanced crop load is vital to expressing the site. Wines of sight are made from, a, from fruit harvested at optimum ripeness and balance. If the fruit is too green or too ripe, excessive manipulation will follow in the winery, and this will corrupt sight expression. Crucially, the wine needs to be made in a sympathetic manner, where methodology and intuition intersect. A level of control over fermentation is critical. Without influence or control of fermentation, the site may only ever be partly revealed or, at worst, masked completely by faulty flavors. Any winemaking techniques employed that can dramatically alter the sensory expression, such as oak, malolactic fermentation, least contact stirring, specific yeast selection, they should be used in a sensing manner, respecting the varietal and the vineyard quality shown at harvest. Balance is vital. When such an ethos is followed in the wine growing, the finished wine should show unique sensory qualities, the characteristics of the site, and a strong personality that has its origins in the fruit at harvest. In short, the wine will show a strong sense of place. The strength of that sense of place will depend on the inherent potential of the site and the varietal match. Wines of sight are not limited to single vineyard wines. Village wines have taken from parcels of similar terroir can express the site, albeit a weaker one than a single vineyard. Finally, and importantly, something we often lose sight of with Sauvignon, great wines of sight reveal more of their sense of place with time in the bottle. Right, let's move on to wines of style which of course is a very important category for Sauvignon producers, especially in Marlborough. Generally speaking, wines of style have low potential for a sense of place. They're usually a blend of different vineyards, subregions, or even regions. They become more of a recipe wine, the goal being to consistently reproduce the same style year on year. This is how they become more widely accepted in the market. The customer loves consistency. They know very little about wine, but they know what they like and they want what they know. Thus, wines of style are usually market-led and commercially priced. This requires wine growing and winemaking strategies that maximize bang for buck, but aren't necessarily aligned with maximizing site expression, even if the site expression is an option. Any sense of place is developed through particular winemaking practices, rather than through a reflection of the variety in sight. And there are a few examples of wines of style showing a sense of place in the world of wine. Think Rioja, but also think Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. If we look at warmer regions for Sauvignon Blanc, such as Austra Southeast Australia, Central Valley in Chile, South Africa, parts of South Africa, Southern France, Spain, parts of California, Italy, and many more, the general perception in the trade and in the marketplace is that these wines don't have a lot of inherent personality linked to the site. This requires a greater level of winemaker intervention to extract a level of flavor which is more often than not man a manipulated expression and has little to do with the site. The resulting wines often taste of nowhere, and at the same time, they taste of everywhere they do not have a sense of place. One exception, although a slightly cooler region than some of the ones I've just listed, is Bordeaux Sauvignon, in particular Pesic Leonion. For whatever reason, winemakers in this region have over the years looked to greater juice tepidity, barrel aging, lees stirring, and indeed blending with other varietals to improve the quality, the personality of the wine. Over the decades, these practices have become a cultural norm for the region, and the better wines have tended to show a unique quality 
born from a fine balance between appropriate levels of intervention to match the terroir. We see a similar evolution, but only over the last 30 to 40 years in California, perhaps, where, the, where many of the better producers and cooler sites of, of this region have used wood to good effect. In this instance, these wines of style do indeed show a sense of place. Another obvious exception is Marlborough that I've touched on already, where even at commercial price points, the vast and distinctive fruit expression and intensity has a strong generic sense of place, despite being a wine of style. Sauvignon Blanc is no shrinking violin in the global wine market. We all know that. Indeed, it has a huge following around the world, but intriguingly, this variety has been very slow on the uptake as far as sense of place is concerned. As I've just mentioned, the majority of this major Sauvignon Blanc producing regions around the world make commercially priced wines of style with little or no sense of place. Don't get me wrong, this is not a criticism, and there is absolutely a market for this product. But given that Sauvignon Blanc has one of the most reliable and recognizable varietal expressions of all wine grape varieties, it is still effectively sitting on the benches. As professionals and lovers of Sauvignon Blanc, we all know about the regional diversity of Sauvignon Blanc. Humor me while I make some generalizations by regions. Pou Fume has a herbal, savory, and, fl and it has flinty notes with firm acidity. Sancerre, slightly riper, and broader palate with more citrus and gooseberry. In terrain, we see more transparency, lightness, freshness. We see thyme, we see lemon curd. There is boxwood and sweaty notes in Dylan's Point. The salty finish of Awateri and Martin, parts of Martinborough, the tomato leaf and the delicate qualities of Waihopi. The pungent pink grapefruit and passion fruit of the stony Wairau soils. The stone fruit, cassis, and smoky aromas of aged white grave. And the list continues. Indeed, there is a lot more diversity out there than most in the global wine trade know about. This presents a great opportunity for Sauvignon producers. Furthermore, it is a real misconception that Sauvignon Blanc can't improve with age. When grown and managed optimally, it has all the fundamentals to do just that for at least 15 years in the better examples. Yet despite these points, a handful of very important opinion makers in the world of wine look at Sauvignon Blanc like they would look at a crossbreed puppy. It's adorable. Isn't it adorable? It's cute. It's lively and playful. But it's lacking true class, nuance, and complexity. Heresy. I think this is absolutely silly talk and illustrates the elitist perspective it does not reflect the current situation at all. Opinion makers with such a view are most likely locked in a complex and, dare I say, dysfunctional relationship with Burgundy. Burgundian romance, as Matt touched on, is built on the diversity of its sites and the multitude of expressions of its two true noble varieties, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, a key quality parameter, perhaps the most important one to these types, is context, by which I mean site, the soil, the grower, the wine growing philosophy, and the local culture. By the way, Matt and I didn't compare notes before this presentation. In fact, it's almost as if the sensory aesthetics to these people are an afterthought to some of, to, to these opinion makers who have this view. Context is, text is so much more important in the higher price segments. So any ambivalence that might exist in the trades towards Sauvignon comes, I believe, from a perceived uniform style, a lack of diversity in this variety and in the regions it has grown. Quite simply, in their minds, there is not enough choice, not enough of the pixie dust these folks call context. We need to change this perception we need these people on Team Sauvignon. I have personally made and or consulted to the production of Sauvignons in at least seven different countries, many different regions within those countries, over many vintages, and there is no question in my mind that Sauvignon has a vast untapped potential towards diversity and side expression. Burgundy was fortunate to have her dedicated 
monks that mapped out the vineyards over the century. History did not provide Sauvignon with these monks. With technology as it is today, however, we have the scope to achieve a similar outcome for Sauvignon, but on a global scale and in a fraction of the time it took those hardworking Christians. As already noted, most wines exhibiting a strong sense of place come from a single vineyard, vineyards or villages. They are wines of sight. On the global stage, only the Loire and to a lesser extent Bordeaux have a reputation for growing and making reputable wines of sight in reasonable volumes. Here is where the opportunity exists for Sauvignon Blanc producers around the world to work together to fill the space to set up camp in this segment. Not only will incremental and profitable business come from it, more importantly, it will start the journey to changing the elitist view of Sauvignon Blanc as a one-trick pony. A sense of place is becoming even more of a consideration for younger consumers, particularly millennials, who are the first ever generation to consciously pay more for a product, product that is high quality and sustainably produced. As the wine industry continues to trend towards rationalization, I believe the crafted premium wine segment, products with a strong sense of place, will only become more differentiated and desirable, as we have seen in beer and coffee. To continue to justify the high average prices and to seek even higher prices and profits, we as a global Sauvignon Blanc producing industry need to embrace the idea of Sauvignon as a chameleon. It can be made to show up in delightfully different ways by changing not only its geographical home, but by maximizing sense of place through sympathetic winemaking. This may seem a bizarre idea in Marlborough, where demand is outstripping supply already and a maximum planting has almost been reached. But it is, it is absolutely essential to safeguard the reputation of Sauvignon. While today we may get great profitability for massive volumes of homogenized styles with generic sense of place, at some point consumers need and want to see evolution. They want greater context and value, or they move on. I believe an emphasis on creating sub-regional and single vineyard categories beyond with a strong sense of place in each of the Sauvignon Blanc producing nations is the next step, but it's only part of the journey to changing perceptions. What is needed is a unified and robust marketing program in each nation to ensure all the hard work in production doesn't go unnoticed by the world. From my experience, a single vineyard is only as successful as the sub-region it calls home. Just as Pinot producers from all around the world travel to Burgundy each year for a second vintage and bundles of inspiration and energy, let's do the same in the Loire and continue to look to Pou Fume, Sancerre, Cancy, Minitou Salon, Touraine, and other sub-regions in the Loire for inspiration. Marlborough Sauvignon, with its global reputation and established sense of place, is perfectly positioned to lead the way. Many local winemakers will be thinking right now, you're an idiot, mate. It has been going on here for years. And of course, I know a lot of sub-regional technical work has already been carried out locally. And many Sauvignons with a sense of place exist today in Marlborough. You will all no doubt taste these over the next few days, or many of these. But more work is needed. We need continued funding for technical work to further understand the sense of place of the different sub-regions in Marlborough. And importantly, how to make these wines to maximize the site expression. But it can't stop there. Brand owners, large and small, need to invest marketing dollars to get the message across. Importantly, producers need to look to sub-regional vineyard styles as an investment in the future of Sauvignon Blanc, rather than a painful and inefficient excursion towards small volume skews. Marlborough is hot on environmental sustainability. It now needs to broaden the definition to include the market dynamics and invest in diversity in the marketplace. Sub-regional and vineyard styles will not be ordered by the container loads in the first instance, but the demand for this more expensive product will grow as the trade and consumers understand and appreciate the rich context Sauvignon Blanc has to offer, the culture of Sauvignon Blanc. Other producing nations around the world should also drive home the key marketing message of context through sense of place, break free of the commodity pigeonhole. Appalachian Marlborough wine 
is a bold start to collaborate together as a region to protect the integrity, the authenticity, and brand value of wines produced in Marlborough. Let's work together to safeguard Sauvignon Blanc's future, to elevate Sauvignon from savage white to noble varietal by proving its diversity and its sense of place wherever it is grown. And most importantly, let's tell the story to the world. Thank you very much for your attention.